So, do you want to learn how to easily insert hanging planes in your architecture images? Well, in this 10 minute video, I'm gonna teach you all there is to know about it. And this workflow will allow you to insert lots of planes in your images using Photoshop and shape them exactly how you like them to be without depending on a detailed 3D model. Hey guys, Oliver here with another in-depth tutorial. Now, if you're new here and would like to see more content on architecture visualization and representation, consider subscribing. All right, so personally, I'd rather use this method instead of a 3D model for a couple of reasons. First being that you usually don't find the exact 3D model you're looking for, meaning that the vines might be hanging differently from what you would like. For example, in this image I created for Maya Incorporadora, I needed to hang the plants in various forms, and to achieve that look in 3D, it would take me much more time for sure. Another reason is that even if you have a good looking 3D model, and let's say that you need to insert it multiple times throughout one or even several images, it will have that duplicated look. And lastly, because doing it in post, you can make the image really unique and apply your own style. Overall, it's an easy process, but there are a couple of important things you need to do to get the correct result. Now, if the hanging plant is on the foreground of your image, I'd suggest that you might consider using a really detailed and realistic 3D model. But for all other needs, this method is going to suit you perfect. Now, make sure to stick to the end of the video because we're going to talk about brushes, shadows, and diving into many topics. And also, at the end, I'm going to give you some tips on how to use hanging plants PNG images. Well, it's not every time that they will fit, but it's definitely handy to have them in your library and know the workflow. All right, enough talking, now let's jump into the tutorial. Okay guys, open up Photoshop, and before anything, I'm gonna teach you how to create the brush we're gonna use later in this video. Now, if you don't want to worry about this tab, and would like to have more of these vegetation brushes, check the link in the video description to get access to all video files and a brush set for plants that I have created. This is a way you can support the channel so I can keep creating these free YouTube videos, but if you can't at the moment or don't feel like it, no worries, this video will guide you through the whole process. Good, now if you search for ivy leaf png on google, you'll find images like so. This will be the base of your brush. Now either choose the plant species you'd like to create or just go for a generic ivy plant. Keep in mind that you can go extra here and use your own photos for this step. Then remove the background if needed and go to edit, define brush preset. The brush has been created, but still has a default behavior. We now need to change the settings to make it more dynamic. So go to Window, Brush Settings, increase the spacing, then check Shape Dynamics and here increase the Size Jitter, Angle and Roundness Jitter. Actually just go crazy with these settings, as always I suggest you trying out different options to see what creates the best result. We need to adjust these lighters to get a randomized result. The scatter option is great as well for this. Once you have set up your brush, make sure to save it as a new one so it maintains the settings we just created. Then, we can move on to finding the vegetation image we're going to choose as a base. But before that, and I really think you're gonna like this one, today's video sponsor is a free 3D scanning app. Take a look at this. Displayland is an app that allows you to scan real world things with your phone, and they reached out to me to introduce this product and I felt it would be perfect for you guys, and it would be really useful for architecture purposes. This app is available for Android and iOS devices. It uses your camera and camera sensors to capture basically anything, from a simple cup to full buildings. And the process is totally straightforward. You just record your object from every angle possible, and then the app will take care of the rest. It will process and give back to you as an OBJ file that can be used in any 3D software and even SketchUp. You would just need a plugin for that. I could totally see a great use for this app as part of an architecture design process. Maybe scanning a room to help you understand the environment, or imagine you had a project to redesign a street, just like we created in this video. You could scan the whole place and work from there. Well, lots of uses for sure. As I said, Displayland is 100% free, so there's no reason for you not to try it. Go ahead and check the link in the video description to know more about it, or just simply access your app store. Thanks Displayland for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the tutorial. We were talking about green wall images, right? 
So you can pretty much use any type of these images, although the best results usually come from the ones that have less contrast. Look, there's no right or wrong here. That's what I always try to say, you gotta test out all the possibilities to see what you like better. Now with that image in your Photoshop file, cover all the area you're going to possibly have plans. Use Ctrl J to duplicate this layer and move it around. Then merge them together using Ctrl E. Then create a mask in that layer and finally invert it to hide all of its content. Shortcut Ctrl I with the mask selected. Now we start the fun part. Here you need to put your artistic skills to the test. You're going to draw the plant using that brush, sort of a leaf by leaf action. But that's why we made that brush to make this process easier and randomized. Do take a look at some references to see how the plants behave and with the help of selection, start painting the hanging plant. So basically we used that brush with white color to reveal the mask and show our base vegetation texture behind it. Now you can either click multiple times to paint or just click and drag, up to you. Make it more voluminous near the vase top part and then add some strings falling out of it. I think the best part of this method is that you can choose where the plants will hang. It can even travel a bit on top of the shelf and then fall off. Once the basic shape of this plant is done, we're going to correct the color. Usually these images come really saturated and too green. So we're going to use the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Don't forget to clip this adjustment layer to the base vegetation image, so it doesn't affect the layers beneath it. Then, with another brush, this one is from the vegetation brush set I mentioned earlier, you can create a similar one using some trees or just use some default ones from Photoshop. So with this brush, we're going to create the stems. You first need to make the brush really small and in a new layer, grab a dark green color. The secret here is to make these stems in a fluid motion. I'm using just a mouse and you will get the hang of it if you practice a couple of times. Note that I usually place this layer below the base vegetation image. Then, with the same brush, but maybe a pixel smaller, connect some of the leaves that are not touching the main stem. Then, after you're confident that you did a good job, you can come back to the base layer mask and add some smaller leaves to give a bit more detail. Awesome, the result is already pretty good, but we gotta add shadows to properly insert the plant into the environment, right? So select all the layers that have parts of the plant, and holding Alt, duplicate them down on the layer stack. Ctrl E to merge them, and then Ctrl U to make them fully black. Move it to the side to match the same direction. And with an eraser, delete the axis. Then apply a Gaussian Blur to this black layer. Well, since these vines are away from the wall, we gotta move the shadow even farther away so it looks right. And also, usually the shadows aren't 100% black. Just like on this image, it has a tint, in this case a bit towards the blue color. Therefore, I'm going to choose the Ctrl U to give the plant shadow a soft bluish tint. Reduce the opacity of this layer. Alright guys, so just two more steps to nail this insertion. 
Second to last, intensify the shadows next to the area where the plant has more leaves. And lastly, apply a brightness and contrast adjustment layer clipped to the base vegetation layer to create a highlight and shadow on this plant. I mean, a brighter and a darker side. So we apply this adjustment layer, invert the mask, and using the vegetation brush, reveal the effect just in the areas that we want to darken it. Well, there you have it, guys. I know there are many moves here to achieve the final result, but for me, this is well worth it. As I said, you can create the exact shape that you're looking for. Oh, and keep in mind that learning this technique will basically allow you to create any type of ivy. Take a look at this example from the round of images I created for this building of Maya Incorporadora. Here, the perforator cladding used as a sun shading has ivy on it, and these ivies were created using the same workflow. Amazing, right? Now, to finish this video, as I promised you, let me show an easier way to insert this type of plant. Well, this will usually work best if applying on hanging vases. You don't have that much freedom, I mean, you're bounded to find high quality PNG images that fit in your image and in the perspective. But it will definitely take less time and I think it's worth knowing the workflow. So you first find your image, maybe google something like PNG hanging plants or PNG ivy, and then you place it in Photoshop, remove the background if needed. Maybe you also need to create a mask to hide some parts of it. and then create the shadow just like we created with the other example. Correct the color, insert the highlights and shadow. These ready to go PNG images could also be used with the previous example, but for me it lacks a bit of the depth we got. Like the plant was occupying the whole face and growing on top of the shelf. We don't get that with these ready-to-go images. Well, to be honest, you can achieve a pretty great result combining both of these workflows. Using the main part of this plant from a real photo, and then extend the plant with the first method. You just gotta match the colors and then combine one into another. You got the idea, right? Alright, I hope you learned something today. Make sure to give this video a like if so, and even share with your friends. I feel that these videos focusing on one specific theme, we can really dive in and work the details. I would love to know your feedback over the comments. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!